You're watching the uh, 6 p.m. newscast on Spectrum Television, ladies and gentlemen. The headline In Canada, the submitting or subcommittee on international human rights of the Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and International Development hold an information session on the situation in Cameroon, particularly in the northern and southwest regions of Cameroon, where the separatist fighters make do to the Cameroonian army. The meeting among or among the speakers, the regional director for Africa at the National of at the National Democratic Institute for International Democratic Institute for International Affairs, Christopher Fomuyong. And various innovations have been spelled out for taxpayers and businessmen in Cameroon this year, following the director of taxes visit year in the city of Douala. Remarkable amelioration spelled out by the Director of Taxes today in Douala includes the reduction of pater payment and a yearly identification in shops and businesses. Details of this and many more in a while. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on another edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Spectrum televisions and may and as we earlier mentioned in our headline various innovations have been spelled out for taxpayers and businessmen in Cameroon this year following the director of taxes visit today in the nation's economic capital Douala remarkable amelioration spelled out by the director of taxes today in Douala include the reduction of uh, patang payment and yearly identification of shops and business centers to uh, benefit from this innovation this also aims of uh, aims at supporting new and growing enterprises to meet up with the challenges of the economy the occasion was attended by the governor of the littoral region samuel jordani ifaha diwa details with josephine binze Let's now talk about something else. We shall be coming back to that report in the course of our 6 p.m. newscast on Spectrum Television. Let's now talk about health. A package of 7 million doses of anti-COVID-19 vaccine has been acquired by the African Center for Disease Control and Prevention with funding from MTN Cameroon. These vaccines will be uh, administered to help personnel in Cameroon and all over Africa, details with only Ladonet. COVID-19 frontline workers in Cameroon will soon receive their first doses of the anti-COVID-19 vaccine. A batch of vaccines acquired by the African Center for Disease Control and Prevention with a 25 million US dollars funding from the telecommunication service MTN. Between March 2020 to February 2021, the COVID-19 had infected over 1,000 health workers, killing over 25. With this, these vaccines will go a long way in protecting these doctors who are always at the front line of the COVID-19 fight. These vaccines will not only be administered in Cameroon, as all 55 African countries are involved. For the moment, this batch of vaccines will not be available until March. And the African Union is yet to communicate on the distribution keys for this donation. With the vaccine still pending, some African countries have already begun the vaccination process. Morocco started a few months back and Gabon has adopted the Russian vaccine Sputnik V. South Africa also followed suit on February 17, 2021. As of February 18, 2021, Cameroon has registered more than 33,000 cases of COVID-19 with 31,300 recoveries and 523 deaths. All this information were compiled from Lugentiste, a health blog managed by health journalist Oliver Tangana. Let's now talk about something else. Cameroon are uh, just two games 
into the 2000 and, uh, 2021 African uh, tournament or basket tournament schedule for Rwanda. Later this year, as uh, they have, or rather, they have, we shall be having that report with our reporter, John Paul Osama. Before then, let's get this report uh, that says that in Canada, the SOP, Committee on International Human Rights of uh, the Standing Committee on African or Foreign Affairs and International Development held an uh, information session on the situation in Cameroon, particularly that is in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, where the separatist fighters make due to the Cameroonian. I mean, the meeting which took place, by, uh, took place on a video conference aims to take stock of the situation and propose solutions to end the ongoing upheaval in uh, the two English-speaking speaking regions of Cameroon. Among the speakers, the regional director for Africa at the National Democratic Institute for International Affairs, that is Christopher, Christopher Fomuyong, who took stock of the situation and proposed solutions let's take a listing of him I first submit the following recommendations for your consideration one call for an immediate ceasefire and cessation of hostilities and a public commitment by the government of cameroon and non-state actors to negotiations with third party facilitation two use your good offices to engage france so she can leverage her privileged position with the government of Cameroon to get the government to commit to peace negotiations to bring an end to the conflict and address its root causes. Three, adopt targeted sanctions against the perpetrators of mass killings, torture, and other atrocities in the ongoing conflict. And four, use Canada's position on multilateral organizations such as the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the African Development Bank, and even NATO to ensure that resources granted to Cameroon for development purposes are not diverted to execute a war against his people whose only crime is to be a minority with a distinct history and genuine political grievances. And on to this uh, sad story, and on to this communique from the Sawa People's Traditional Assembly, that is uh, Ngondo, the official ceremony, funeral ceremony of His Majesty D. Nzinga Aqua III, Supreme Chief of the uh, Katon Aqua, King of the Bonambales, former President of Ngondo, will take place from March 22. To 2000 or 27, 2021 in Douala, following this program from Monday 22 to Thursday 25 March, cultural animations, conferences, and roundtables will take place at the South of the Fed. That is in Aqua from 4 p.m. Friday, March 26. Tribute evening at the Palais Dika Aqua will take place from 6 p.m. and on Saturday, March 27. An official farewell ceremony will take place at the Place, at the Place de Fête de la Bessege, that is from 8 p.m., 8 a.m. rather, done in Douala for the Ngondo community by the acting president, His Majesty, Ebumbu Douala Bell. We still continue with our sad page. Louis Marie Njambu's departure still has wounds in the heart. Of his family and loved ones, founder of the University Institute of the Gulf of Guinea, who died on January 7th, has been honored today at the campus of the IUJ following the removal cops or removal of cops at the military hospital in Bonanjo. Details with Josephine Binze. <laughs> It was an atmosphere filled with grief and mourning. Death may have separated him from his loved ones and intellectual family, but his legacy in the reformation of higher institutions in Cameroon remains unbeatable. The corpse of late Louis Marine Jambo, founder of the University Institute of the Gulf of Guinea and other higher institute affiliates, has been removed at the Garnizon Military Hospital this morning. First of all, is uh, hard work, uh, a lot of dedication, 
uh, just really in peace, I would say, uh, because that's that's really what it was all about. Just really uh, spreading love and peace, you know, throughout his kids and his family, and um, so um, so I say peace, love, and really uh, just just heartbreak. I mean, obviously losing somebody as big as him uh, with everything that unfolded, obviously uh, it's very you know troubling and traumatizing, but. You know, the family is uh, hanging pretty tight. Uh, we're doing the best we can. Um, it's not easy, but thankfully we've we've received a lot of support from uh, everybody, really. His academic family equally came to pay their last respect to him, who heartily served them while he was alive. Family biologic, comme vous pouvez constater. His biological family is here present, as well as well wishes and his academic family to pay their last respect because academy was his entire life. Seventh January was the day the late pioneer and founder of the University Institute of the Gulf of Guinea died. With more than 2,000 students who have drunk from his academic wells of wisdom, he leaves behind family and friends to mourn him. May the soul of the departed rest in the bosom of the Lord. Let's take on to uh, our education page. Several students of the University of Douala have cried out of the various difficulties they faced before acquiring the Presidential Excellence Award. In the following report, our reporter Oni Ladonet met with the authorities of one of the authorities of the university who explained the requirement to be made a report. The process of acquiring the annual Presidential Excellence Award is far from being a bed of roses. At the University of Douala, the more than 13,000 students selected need to meet up with certain requirements. Et les conditions ont été élaborées. Uh, au ministère de l'enseignement supérieur. Conditions were made at the Ministry of Higher Education after a process that was judiciously followed. So the Minister of Higher Education set the requirements for the excellence prize for the year 2018-2019. Students should have a discharge slip and a bank receipt. They should also have an identification document which may either be the school ID or a national ID. Students with these requirements are being paid since Monday. Cela se sont présentés depuis lundi devant nos guichets et sont régulièrement payés. An alternative solution has been provided for students without complete documents. Pour une opération de 13000 étudiants, 13000 environ des étudiants Pour la grande majorité qui ont perdu leur reçu, qui ont perdu des quitus, qui ont perdu des quitus. De... For an operation that consists of about 13,000 students, for a majority that has lost their discharge sleep, the solution gotten is the bank will sign their profile, which proves these students have paid their fees for the year 2018-2019. Here at the finance department, an authorization is given which permits them to receive the money. In other cases, some have lost their ID cards. We go as far as accepting ID receipts and school ID. It's just that you can't satisfy everybody. We have those who do not have an identification card and want to get the money, but that's impossible. Sauf que vous ne pouvez pas donner satisfaction à tout le monde parce qu'il y en a qui se présentent effectivement sans pièce d'identité et qui veulent percevoir l'argent, ce qui est parfaitement impossible. The road gets complicated for these students who spend hours and probably days hoping to get their profile certified at the bank for a fee and signed at the accounting office. In order to meet up with time, some students come as early as 5 p.m. but still end up not receiving the money on the same day. The 2018-2019 Excellence Award distribution will go on for a month and a half and authorities promise all beneficiaries will get their dues. Let's now take on to our international page with the VOA. In a ticketing office in Nairobi, Kenya, Abdelazak Noor Ibrahim keeps tabs on America. Originally from Somalia, 
Ibrahim fled war-torn Mogadishu in 2004 and became a refugee. He and his family were approved to travel to the U.S. for resettlement in early 2017, just as Donald Trump became president and signed proclamations restricting travel from several majority Muslim countries, including Somalia. I passed all the interviews, health and everything. Then the former president introduced a travel ban. I have been here in the last four years, and before that, I have been here for more than 10 years, hoping that I will be resettled. Ibrahim applauds President Joe Biden for lifting travel restrictions and expanding U.S. refugee admissions. I am so hopeful things may change for us. Starting in October, the U.S. is set to welcome up to 125,000 refugees a year, up from a 15,000 limit at the end of the Trump administration. It's going to take time to rebuild what has been so badly damaged. Some see challenges ahead, especially during the pandemic. There will be a, a number of challenges, including on the, on the funding level, on the staffing level, on just getting these processes up and going again. But arguably, the biggest or one of the biggest challenges at the moment to getting that program back to the robust levels that the U.S. administration has said it would like to see is the COVID pandemic. Even so, U.S.-based resettlement organizations hope to be busy once again. Really looking forward to staffing back up. So what we're planning on is, with some of our existing partners, opening additional offices. The backers of Trump's policies have misgivings, saying more rigorous security vetting helps ensure resettled refugees pose no danger so, to the United States. Um, there was a, a, a review of the vetting program at the beginning of the Trump administration, and, and that needs to be done every few years. Um, so it, that should not be thrown out just because Trump's name was attached to it. Refugee advocates say security concerns are overblown. There is this claim, uh, which isn't actually true, that refugees are potentially criminals or terrorists. Um, you know, the truth is that a refugee is far less likely to commit any sort of crime than a native-born American. In Nairobi, Abraham hopes living in limbo will soon be over. I would love to go and settle in another country to leave the life of uncertainty that I have lived with here for so many years and live a better life. Eleni Barrows, VOA News, Washington. Let's now take on to our spot page. The under-20 Lions of Cameroon have made it to the next round of the African Cup of Nations in Mauritania as they beat Uganda. But a solidarity goal to near in their second group a game. This means that with the six points in group, they are through with or through as they await their quarterfinals cup co opponent rather. Did you jump on Saba? Two goals in two games for Jang Junior. Cameroon's center forwards has ensured that the under-20 Lions pick up a ticket to the quarterfinals of the ongoing under-20 African Cup of Nations in Mauritania. They thus become the first team to make it out of the group phase after two games while waiting for the rest of the group matches to come up later on. His sublime performance earned him the Man of the Match award against Uganda. The young star attributes his goal-scoring form in this competition to the hard work they are put under by their coach, Christophe Usmanu. The Lions are now looking forward to their last and final Group A match, which comes up this Saturday against Mozambique, the only team in the group with no points so far. Cameroon will play the best third-place team of either Pool B or C in the quarterfinals, when the group phase is done on Thursday. Cameroon's only success in this competition was way back in 1995 and for their 10th participation, the likes of Jang Jr., Chindo John Bosco will all want to rewrite history and stamp their names across the sands of time. And now Cameroon are just two games into the 2021 Africa or Afro Basket. Tournament schedule for Rwanda later 
uh, later this year as they have to play two qualification games in Yaoundé against uh, Equatorial Guinea and Guinea. What's more, John Paul Summer. The Yaoundé Multipurpose Sports Complex will this weekend host Group B and C qualifying matches for the 2021 FIBA Afro Basket Tournament scheduled for Rwanda. Cameroon, playing their last two games in Pool C at home, will want to continue from where they left off last time out as they seek to be counted amongst the top three teams in their pool. Cameroon currently sits in second position behind Ivory Coast, whom they lost two in their last game. They have two in order to qualify with one of these three automatic spots, ensure that they beat Equatorial Guinea in the second leg this Friday and seek for another double against Guinea 24 hours later. With five points on the classification table, they will have to work hard with the likes of Benoit Bala, expected to improve his 16.0 efficiency per game, as well as the likes of Arno William Adala. The qualifiers are expected to run for three days in Yaoundé, as the Yaoundé Multipurpose Sports Complex will be graced with matches of Group B with Senegal, Angola, Kenya and Mozambique all vying to grab that ticket to Rwanda later this year. Sports reports by uh, John Paul Samar draws the cuttings on today's edition of the 6 pm Newscast on Spectrum Television. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Till we meet again. Good night.